So what we're going to cover in this video is how to improve the performance of your workbook by changing the calculation mode from automatic to manual. And what I've got here is a spreadsheet that has a macro recorded in it. And this macro does a lot of copying and pasting of values, and then it calculates a worksheet. And our performance code literally just switches calculation mode to manual calculation and switches off calculate before save. And when we restore the speed, it just restores it from the saved values of those settings. So I have a workbook here with a calculation worksheet and the calculation worksheet is just calculating the fun value at the end of a period of time steps. In this case, I've got 500 time steps and we are calculating the compound interest between the start and the end of each time step. And what I've done is to record a macro, which basically copies the values of these fund values at start and the base interest rate to use. It copies each of them to the input cells here. Then it recalculates the worksheet and then it copies the final answer back to the input worksheet. I then created two buttons on this worksheet. Both of them execute the same underlying macro, the same subroutine. One of these does it without changing the calculation mode and the other one does change the calculation mode. And the overall goal of this video is to show you the difference when you change from automatic calculation to manual calculation. So let's see what happens when we click on one of these buttons. First of all, I'm just going to clear out the values in the end fund row. Then I'm going to click on the update table slow button. And what we should see is after we click on this button, it populates this set of cells here. Okay, so let's click on that button now. And we can see all it's doing is copying and pasting the values of a load of cells between worksheets and then performing a calculation of that worksheet in between. Okay. So that's finished now and we can see the values in this block of cells have now been populated. One thing I should point out is that within this calculation, I have used the rand between function, which will select a random value to add to our base interest rate to get our total interest rate. This means that every time I run this calculation, I'm going to get different answers for the final answer. The important thing is that this table is updated and that's what we want to achieve. Um, the actual calculations are not important. So let's actually take a look at our VBA code. To start with, let's take a look at the update table macro. So you can see all I've done is recorded a macro and then I've just added in a few additional uh, blank lines just to make it a little easier to read. And it's literally selecting a worksheet, selecting a cell, copying, selecting another worksheet, selecting a cell, and then just paste special values. And it literally does this all the way along for each of the inputs, copying them from the inputs worksheet to the calculation worksheet and then copying the results back. And in between here, we're doing a lot of calculation of the active worksheet and a lot of saving of the workbook. The next thing I want to show you is some functions that I've put together to improve our performance. So within this module M performance, I've defined a number of um, module level variables, one to store the calculation setting, one to store the calc before save setting, one to store a current calculation mode, and I've got an enumeration for recording the calc speed mode, whether it's either slow or fast. I've got a couple of variables for recording the time between the start and the end. And it allows us to set up a timer and display how long it has taken to perform a given set of actions. Now, the calc setting and the calc before save setting, these are application uh, specific settings. So within the application, we have something known as the application doc calculation setting and the application doc calculate before save setting and we are just defining some module level variables to save values that can be used for those particular settings. Why do we do that? Well, we'll explain in a minute, but it's to allow us to restore the original settings 
after we have speeded up our workbook and to give us a nice convenient way to do that. So if we look at the start timer subroutine, literally all this does is it assigns the value of the start time variable to the timer, which is the current time. The stop timer function does something very similar. It, assign, it assigns the end time to the timer variable at that point in time. And then it just calculates the difference between the end time and the start time, and it returns that as a double. And we also have a little bit of code that prints the current run time to the immediate window. So that's our timer variables. The next thing I have is a function which refreshes our performance variables. And all that does is it grabs the current application level dot calculation value and the application dot calculate before save value. And it updates our module level variables with the values of those. And that is just so that we can restore them later when we're finished. So let's talk about the speed Excel up function. This function has a few lines to print some information to the immediate window. We'll talk about this print performance variables function a little later. And once it's printed some information, it next checks the current calculation speed. And if it's set to slow, then it will refresh the performance variables. So it will update our module level variables for calculation mode and calculate before save. Then it will update them to improve the performance. So it will set the calculation mode to manual calculation and it will set the calculate before save to false. Then it will set the current calculation mode to fast. So we know we're in fast mode. And the idea of doing this is that we don't want to bother trying to speed up a spreadsheet that's already been set to a fast mode of calculation. And again, we just print some performance variables to the immediate window. Um, when we restore the Excel speed, we basically undo all of those changes. So this block of code here is the stuff that's actually doing something. And it restores the application dot calculation to the one that we saved earlier. And the dot calculate before save to, again, the one that we saved earlier. And then it sets the calculation speed to slow. Very straightforward. Uh, we also have a couple of additional functions here just to print a human readable calculation mode from this Excel calculation type variable. Obviously, this Excel calculation is a value that can be, um, I think it's a long or an integer, so 0, 1, 2. And we want to know the human readable values for those. So it's just a select case statement that tells us the human readable values. We also have a function which prints our performance variables. And this, again, just prints out the calculation mode using the get readable calculation mode function. And it prints out the calculate before save value. Last thing I want to take a look at is our actual examples where we run through this code. And I've put this in the module M examples. All the M examples code is doing, we have two separate subroutines. The first one just loops through the update table macro 10 times with the timer at the end and the timer at the start. And the update table end times fast subroutine does exactly the same thing. The only difference is that we've got these two lines of code here, which speed Excel up and this one, which restores the Excel speed. So what we should see when we run update table end times slow is that we get a, a given time for running this update table 10 times. And when we run it fast, we should get a faster time when we run this update table 10 times. So let's actually see these in action. If we right click on the update table slow and go assign macro, we just want to double check that this is doing the update table end times slow. Okay, great. And for the fast, we just want to double check that this is doing update table end times fast. Okay, close this down. We're going to click on the update table slow button. Okay. And then we're going to click on the update table fast button. Again, does the same thing, runs the macro 10 times. So we've run those two bits of code. Let's just open up the immediate window. And we can see here when we were in automatic calculation mode, we had a runtime of around 26 seconds. And when we move to manual calculation mode, and when we don't calculate before save, we have a runtime of 20 
three seconds. So that's a three second saving on a, a, a macro, which takes about 25 seconds to run. So we're looking at around 10%. That is the first way to improve the performance of your spreadsheets. You go and you update the calculation mode from automatic calculation to manual calculation and you avoid calculating before save. And I will upload the example workbook to my Facebook group so you can download it, take a look at the code and use some of those functions yourself to improve the performance of your VBA code.